Join us for a review of the new BMW X5 plug-in hybrid. Let's go! Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and thank you so much if you are with us for a long time already. This one here, the X5 in the new generation, has this bigger double kidney, really massive, also with adaptive air intakes, they only open on demand and more horizontally drawn headlamps and nice daytime running light signature. Optional, you can get adaptive LEDs, the normal LEDs are standard, and optional, optional, the laser lights with even more high beam functionality and you can see that in the blue accentuations right there. Just over 4 meters 90, 16 foot 2 or 195 inches is the X5 and this is a little bit longer, also a little bit more wheelbase than the previous generation. More if you consider the previous PF and the nowadays PF has been done under the hood, soon more to that. Here with the crossover wheel arches you know in the sporty lines it's also available in vehicle color but i actually prefer it with suvs as it is here right now because that says hey i'm an suv <laughs> an optional 21 inch wheels so one of the biggest that are available yeah you can also live with smaller ones then you have a little bit more dampening comfort usually an x5 is also available with a standard adaptive suspension and an option you can go for the air suspension here the plug-in hybrid comes standard with the air suspension because they say BMW says our customers will go for the PF rather want you know the, like the luxury and comfort and calmness not the most aggressive driving behavior and so the air suspension here is already standard and you know both suspension are actually doing a good job so yeah it's definitely no loss for that. The new X5 looks a little sportier in the rear, especially due to those new tail lamps. And they are even a little bit three-dimensional. That's what I like about them. This one, by the way, the X-Line. X-Line is characterized that you have those gray or silver contrasts here in the lower and also seen it in the front part. Then you have those beauty exhaust tips on the outside and the real exhaust on the inside from this three-liter six-cylinder. And talked about it quite a lot with the designer of the vehicle and they actually use those outside tips because they say they don't want to use pure fake exhaust tips like other manufacturers. They also want to have a little bit of a function but still want to have a more expressive design than just the exhaust tips on the inside. So under the hood, whereas the previous generation used the 2.0-liter 4-cylinder, now they switched the PF to the inline 6-cylinder, 3.0-liter of displacement turbo petrol engine. And why did they do that? Well, talk to the engineer and he actually said, yeah, you know, we tried some things you now comparing both engines and this one was not less efficient than the small one in this combination and so they thought yeah why not giving the customers two cylinders more if you pay such a high price for a vehicle you might be more satisfied with six cylinder and also appreciate more of the sound when you use the kickdown so what about charging and battery and so on so we're charging at the moment and unfortunately only with a maximum of 3.7 kilowatt yeah, that's not too much, but the BMW philosophy is rather that you say, yo, PF customers leave their car overnight somewhere, the battery is not too big, and then it doesn't matter anyway if it's that strong. Yeah, for short recharging, you know, if you're at the public charging station, then it does make a difference, but for the normal use case, you charge at work or you charge at home and then again leave it in the basement garage or in your normal garage or whatever, then it's also fine that you cannot recharge that fast, so you would just use a normal household plug for example so charging power 3.7 kilowatt battery size is 24 kilowatt hours and that's already quite reasonable for a pf remember recently the gle pf had 31 kilowatt hours that is even a little bit bigger and was about 100 kilometers of pure electric range and here now with this battery about 80 kilometers of pure electric range that's about 50 miles and Considering other PFs, yeah, the GLE a little bit more now with the bigger battery, but comparing to other PFs, this one really one of the, you know, most electric ranges ones already. So I think that already makes sense.
One advantage of the PF is that you get an independent heating, yeah, a standard equipment. They can also, in this case, control it with this big computer key, as I always call it. But also keyless entry available, of course, and door closing sound. Yeah, quite solid from this big door and also bigger door pockets and the nice overall build quality. The ambient lighting will be used right there. And they really stepped up the build quality if you compare it to the previous generation. Then there's the M steering wheel, so you can also get the sporty styling in the interior if you like. The deco elements, and in this case, rather this, you know, this, this is a structured material. Looks aluminum alike, but it's not aluminum. Um, but definitely, definitely looks also quite good. Those seats are also available for the X5 in Sensatec, a sustainable material. In this case here, the animal skin pack. Of course, Sensatec would fit more to the PHEV, definitely. And they also expect a lot of California customers, especially, who are already a little bit further as for the Eco 7S. So let's get inside right here. And 1m86 or 6 foot 1 leaves a lot of headroom still. There's also a panoramic roof available if you like one. Interior overview. You can see here there's a separate climate unit. You can still control it while driving. Like to do that and with the screen right there. Then you have the steering wheel, which is in the M style. You can also get a different one. Right side for the voice control, for example. You can say Hello BMW or then use this button. That would also be possible to trigger it. Drive me to Audi Ingolstadt. <laughs> Let's see what it does. Maybe it says, no, they suck. I don't go there. Oh, there it is. Audi AG. Yeah, shall we go there and mix them up a little bit? <laughs> so, but you see that works very well for the GPS input. You can also change temperature. Or maybe you have some, you know, creative tasks for this vehicle. And as we are here right now at the GPS, there again, we are the BMW Welt here today. So this um, you know, famous tourist attraction, one of the most famous tourist attractions in Germany, actually. And that's the, um, the cylinder building from BMW, the headquarters. And this is all, you know, the plant. Of course, the new 3 Series is also majorly built right here. So the digital instruments right here in the blue scheme for this P half version. And then um, you can see left side speed, right side RPMs. But in this case, the special one that we have this charging meter when we see the recuperation, for example. And in the middle, when you have the GPS route set, you can see the map. That's quite practical. And on the left side, you can see the fuel status. And on the right side, the electric range here at the moment, about 30 kilometers but it's already below 50% of charging state. So then it would be 100 up to that and then about 80 kilometers or 50 miles. So overall quite cleverly used, definitely. And you can also see the driving modes and when you are in a sport mode, then you get the maximum boost altogether, about five and a half seconds acceleration to one kilometer or 62 miles an hour. Then you have the real RPMs from the combustion engine because in the acceleration figure, yeah, <laughs> Jonas likes to rev it up here for the combustion engine as well. And the thing is, you have got almost the same acceleration as for the normal 40i 3-liter six-cylinder. Getting the rear of the car is very interesting. Well, it looks like, like any normal X5. And again, soft touch materials here at the instant of the doors. Here, a rather subtle design. I also like bright interiors, definitely. And the sensor tech is also available in beige, That's, so that would be a great choice. USB-C chargers here at the back side of the seats, if you like those. And there's also an additional AC unit, if you like that. But still a lot of options to tick even here with the PF. And the most interesting thing is, is there any compromise with the rear bench? And I can tell you, no, there's not. It's the very same rear bench as any normal X5. Yeah, the rear legroom is not, you know, it's not really that much. It's okay. I mean, for four tall adults, even five in the middle part, it's no problem. But considering, again, the exterior length to the interior length, the package, the relation is not that good. Headroom, this is no problem. Also for taller people, so leaves a lot of headroom still here. And in the X6, by the way, you fall a little bit more backwards, so the X5 definitely is more comfortable. So 500 liters up to 1,720 liters means you lose 80 to 140 liters in comparison to the normal X5 here with the PHEV, which still has the split opening. That's pretty cool. You can sit on it also with two people. That's no problem and can have a picnic or, or something. The only thing you have to always remember, remember here, those buttons, you know, don't touch them because 
let's say, you know, maybe you have a blanket above that or something, and then someone stands up and hits it with a uh, with a leg or something, it is possible, depending on, you know. Here in this case, it doesn't stand out too much, but you can actually hit it with your leg like this unintentionally, and then everything might close and just think about, you have some picnic stuff on there, and then, oh my God, not that this would have happened to me, just very theoretically speaking. Yeah, <laughs> but still, this split hatch is really cool, still. But maybe next time, BMW engineers, or think about a lock function, you know, like a picnic lock function where you can say like, button is now without function or whatever, you know, there might be something. Also child safety test here. That works pretty well. And the lower part would also close. So, and now this cover here, why do they have this cover? Yeah, because of the background of the possible seven seater. That's of course a little bit wobbly, no fixed rail at the side. Then, this is one short compromise, it's not that low, but that's actually no problem. You can store a little charging cable right here, and this would be the fuel tank now. Not the battery, the battery even plays further back, so they have to move, move the fuel tank to here, and otherwise you could put this whole cover up and have a little bit more space, but that's a compromise we can really live with. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the BMW X5 in this new generation as the new PF 45E. And of course, the best thing, as always with PFs or electric vehicles, you start silently. And that's just really cool, especially in the city, no local emissions. Also talk to BMW about the overall emissions. If you think about, you know, for the battery and so on, you have a little bit more um, effort for production, of course but they made calculations for about 200,000 kilometers, assuming that would be like a normal life cycle of a car. Of course, it can also run, run longer. Then they said that um, the, all, even the overall emissions, you know, and the resource and so on, because you have some fuel savings, if you, of course, recharge frequently, um, would be like down to 30%, sometimes even, 40, even more uh, when you recharge with renewable energies. So their calculations at least say that it does also make sense overall. I can just stress it's about the charging infrastructure if you can recharge frequently and of course best then if you have some renewable energy sources then it really makes sense also for that one. And the new X5 is really cool as for the calmness in the interior it's really silent also at higher speeds. We just let the bus drive by. I mean, it's hard to handle the big cars, so always think about the big guys, <laughs> the buses and the trucks. Definitely harder to handle them with the passenger cars here. So I think it really fits to this vehicle. That's also the same I already said with the GLE, because those vehicles are really sophisticated. They have, um, you know, this tranquility in the ride here with the air suspension, especially a soft ride. A lot of comfort with those upright seating position and then it always makes you calm down here especially in the city you know there's a lot of traffic now and so on and then when it's just silent that's of course the same for all electric vehicles but especially for those that are very well insulated it just makes you calm down so now we're getting to a little bit more speed and the all electric threshold is 135 kilometers or 80 miles an hour then it always goes to the combustion engine up to that speed you can still drive all electric and if you hit all electric again you can also you know just stress it but it depends on them don't have the AC on at the moment um, for some reasons they maybe need the combustion engine at some point but then again if you run it steady it's also no problem so you can play around a little bit with the driving mode and see what you know fits fits best to you, definitely. Um, maybe at some point also when you have a root plant, the car says maybe the electric mode is not the most efficient here, you know? And then it goes rather on the combustion animal because when you're going like this here, 80 or 90 kilometers an hour, that is actually then the steady speed, 
quite efficient with the combustion engine. So you always have to take that one into account as well. Um, some things vary from PHEV to PHEV. For example, how much power do we have with the all-electric drive? Is it just a helper or is it also able to drive all-electric even with some, let's say, reasonable acceleration? And the thing here with this car is, it's rather like the GLE. You can also have an acceleration and I just want to try out now when I go to the all-electric mode. Yeah now it's possible again and now it's also charging when I'm reducing the speed and I can still have some electric acceleration and yeah I feel a resistance in the pedal and then not much is coming then I would need to press it through and then the combustion engine is getting active but you can also have an electric acceleration with this one can drive it all electric no problem with the Audi perhaps recently that was rather like plan that the electric drive is like more a helper and the combustion engine gets activated very soon. So BMW and Mercedes, obviously because they use bigger batteries, concentrate a little bit more on the all-electric driving as for that. And still here, even at um, 80 kilometers an hour, you could still have a, you know, advantage of that from being more silent, but also the combustion engine is that well insulated, you don't hear of that, you know, don't hear much of that. Just when you go into sports mode, the RPMs are also turned up a little bit higher and you hear and get more from this combustion engine and you have the combined power output which is somewhat you know about this five and a half second which you also get with a 40i pure petrol engine and that is actually quite decent and the power delivery is a little bit different than with this one because you have also this electric boost let's see like this 70 kilometers to 100 let's do that That's it. So that goes quite quickly. And just the very first moment, you feel something of the e-power, but just a little bit, not too much. In the GLE, for example, I felt a little bit more. So when you accelerate it out hard, it rather feels the same as the 40i. So not too much of a difference as for this respect. And now to our conclusion for today with the BMW X5 S 45e, the plug-in hybrid. Well, it pretty much drives in the normal combustion mode like the normal 40i with the inline six-cylinder petrol engine. And that's also what they wanted to achieve on the one hand. So there's not like a you know, big change for you if you come from this engine or a similar engine from the predecessor. But then the driving with the all-electric, especially in the city, is so much more calm and a little bit more sophisticated those electric moments are pretty cool and if you just use the brakes even on the motorway when you drive more than the pure electric speed allows you know the power is not really that much that much lost you can also use this regenerative braking all the time and i really think that the all silent all electric driving really fits to the calm and driving experience to this vehicle so that's actually pretty cool and again if Maybe it makes also financially sense for you together with some governmental or taxation programs. Then it's even more attractive. Other than that, to drive locally emission-free, that's of course good. And also all silent for your neighbors and so on. Well, and especially with this new electric range, 50 miles or 80 kilometers, that really makes sense. And especially if you recharge frequently, maybe even every day and just use the normal household plug and let this car stand overnight, that will do just fine. Then we can also excuse somewhat that the kilowatt charging power here for the HC charger is not let's say you know that sophisticated as it would be probably also with some of the competitors so they did not put any emphasis on that so and if you just look at the normal fuel consumption of the combustion engine which is about nine liters on 100 kilometers if you just use it as a combustion engine which is about 26 mpg us or 31 mpg uk that's still quite reasonable and our total fuel consumption yeah, it's already spent. Can you really take it for a PF? It was about six years or more kilometers for today, which is 39 MPG US and 47 MPG UK. But again, this really depends on, are you using all this electric power first? Are you using the hybrid mode? How often are we charging and so on? But just to give you, you know, like a, like a small hint, but definitely fuel consumption still goes down even after you have depleted the battery because you could still always use this regenerative braking. So, 
Also tune into the GLE PF review. Maybe also check out some other engine versions we have tested with the BMW X5 in this new generation. See you there, guys, and leave us some comments about this very car.